What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about how I use my art journal to plan and improve my photography. We are not gonna talk about how shiny I am in this video. <laughs> it is 32 degrees in here. It is another heat wave. And if you can hear the AC running in the background, uh, just know that it is not, <laughs> it is not doing the job. And I'm also sincerely sorry for whatever auditory disturbance the AC is making. Uh, yeah, so that's my disclaimer. It's way too hot, I hate it. But I'm not gonna think about the existential dread that hot summers bring on right now. So let's get on to the video. Heat wave by the glass animals is a really good song. Okay, so first off, what is an art journal? Uh, an art journal is a kind of journal or diary or sketchbook or whatever you want to call it that is not strictly written. So this is what mine looks like. I've had this one since March. I've filled it up about halfway. It looks like it's more than halfway full, but if you look at the spine, you can see how many pages are actually left. And I have kept one of these for probably over a decade, definitely over a decade since I was like 14, I think. And only in the last few years have I started using it for photography related purposes, but I found it super helpful and it was really easy to adapt my already existing kind of tools and techniques that I use in my art journal to help benefit my photography. I always buy an art journal that has blank pages, um, even though most, I would say 70% of what is in here is written down, but I like to buy blank pages because it allows me to draw out grids, sketch shoots, sketch poses, do mind maps, and just different things like that. Right now I'm using a Zap Book One because it's got cheaper pages and so I don't feel as bad about going to the pages really quickly. But yeah, <laughs> so there's lots of different kinds of journal that you can use, but that's not strictly related to photography. So I'm just gonna cut to the chase and get to how I use these to help improve my photography. So I just have a list here of photography related ways that I use my art journal um, in day-to-day -day life. So I'm just gonna jump right in. Uh, so the first way is scheduling, and this is definitely one of the more important ways that I use my art journal. As you saw from my last vlog video, although I don't support the hassle culture mentality and I think it's emotionally taxing and bad for humanity in general, I am a sucker and so I've totally bought into hustle culture when it comes to photography. I do hustle quite a bit and I'm constantly doing something related to photography in some form or another. <laughs> so having it all written down in a schedule really helps me keep track of the stuff that I'm doing now and the stuff that I have to do in the future. Which brings me to my next item, which is making to-do lists. So I make quite a lot of to-do lists in my, in my journal. I make one about once a week and it will have anywhere between like 10 and 25 items on it. I'll show you the last couple weeks. The main features of my to-do list are that it has check boxes so that when I do something on the to-do list, I can check it off and I get that hit of dopamine that I need to continue on slugging through the to-do list. I've also got the date at the top that I started the to-do list so I know how old some of these items are. And then I've got the items kind of listed. I like to break shoots down so I have sort X shoot and edit X shoot as two different items on the to-do list so I can still track my progress even though the book is incompletely closed on that shoot. Sometimes it does get a little bit elongated, but honestly it just makes me feel like I'm accomplishing a little bit more. The next item on my list is planning and brainstorming photo shoots. Um, I actually have these as two different items, but they're pretty similar. So for planning photo shoots, if a model contacts me and they have like a specific idea or I'm gonna collaborate with a makeup artist and they've got like some inspiration that they wanna do, maybe they wanna do a pink theme or you know, for the 80s theme that I showed you guys on this channel, um, something like that. If I want to then brainstorm the look, I will write down a whole, like make a little mind map of inspirations, colors, themes, things like that. And then I will draw out different versions of the model and draw my styling, my styling inspiration for the shoot over top. So like for this, for example, I have a makeup artist who's I'm gonna collaborate with me and they're going to do a super like geometric, interesting lined look on the face. And so I brainstormed some plans for to kind of compliment that. It actually really helps when I'm super excited for a shoot and I just have all this energy like buzzing around. I'm like, how can I prepare for this? And then I just like to draw out just different ideas for the shoot. I have a really exciting shoot coming up. I'm just waiting for some items in the mail to come. And I'm gonna be shooting for one of my favorite artists on Instagram. I'm super stoked for it. And I've got like some models all picked out and like outfits all picked out. So I drew up different um, outfits that would possibly go with the t-shirts that have the art on it. So now when I go to a secondhand store or a vintage store or something and I'm looking to try and style looks around these pieces that I'm gonna be getting to shoot, I have like a visual reference for what might look good with each thing. I've already planned it out so I can just get in and get out. 
As for brainstorming shoots, um, sometimes when I'm feeling like stagnant creatively, like I've just been doing a lot of shoots that are really similar or really underwhelming or I'm just feeling like not good about my art, I will draw like a grid on the page and then in each square in the grid just sketch out a different concept. And it doesn't really matter if I intend to do these concepts or not, it just helps get those creative juices flowing and getting me excited for the art again. So this is a way that I like help get past creator's block. For the three look selfie shoot that I did like way back when, I think it was like back in December or something, the looks in that video came from a brainstorming session like this one. Actually, let me see if I can find it. This is not the one that inspired that video, but this is a similar one. So it's just a lot of different things that play with lighting and like different techniques. I had a really cool um, felt pen set for this one, so I was able to do it in color. But you just kind of get the idea, right? Like it's not necessarily an artistically beautiful sketch, but it gives you an idea of how the shoot would be done. And that's, that's what's important. And then it's also interesting seeing how different the sketch is from the final product. The next item on my list is tracking photography goals. And I also wanna like, you know, it's not just about goals, it's also about like just staying on track creatively with my vision for how I want my photography career to develop. Um, so I'm not gonna show you any of those mind maps, but I'll show you what they look like. So this is kind of an example. Um, this is not a goal tracking mind map, this is a video notes mind map, but the goal tracking one looked almost identical. Some of the things that are on my photography goals tracking mind maps include things like, I wanna rent a studio space in the future. I want to collaborate more often with makeup artists, uh, prefer on every shoot. I want to reach out to clothing stores and pitch my services. I want to have dedicated styling for every shoot. I want to do more collabs with like bigger teams. All of these things and that way I can just look at them all on one page and and visualize like okay I this is what I need to do if I want to improve and if I see that I'm not improving it's because I'm not doing these things and it just kind of helps me ground myself a little bit when I'm feeling like I'm just stagnating or I don't know where my photography is going or something like that. I find it almost like a meditative exercise to write these things out because as long as I can see them, I can conceivably do them. And that makes me feel a lot better about myself sometimes. <laughs> Don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm a very like list <laughs> oriented person. I love making lists and, and spreadsheets and just ways of, of visualizing things that are to come. It makes me feel prepared and in control. So I would highly recommend <laughs> using at least, at least trying to make a photography goals tracking mind map um, if you're feeling like you're creatively stagnating in your art. Oh, another one on my list was actually buy quality studio lighting, but I actually bought quality studio lighting today. I just, only one head, but it was very expensive <laughs> and it's very nice, so I'm very excited about it. Well, that's actually a good segue into my next item, which is planning gear purchases. So maybe once a month, I will make a mind map that again, looks a lot like this and it'll just be like gear I need to buy. And around the circle will be all of the different gear items that I have found myself wanting in the last little while. I will put stars by the ones that I feel are necessary for my creative development. So, you know, something like light painting brushes, not so much, that's more of just like a purchase that I'd like to have fun with, but something like studio lighting, I feel like I actually do really need that if I want to advance into shooting in studio more often. So that was a high priority purchase. And then something like a film camera would be like a two star purchase. It's just a way for me to kind of manage my, my budget and my finances and also making sure that when I go to the photo store, which is very rare because it's open only when I'm at work. <laughs> um, when I go to the photo store, I'm not just like standing there forgetting everything that I had. I have like a picture of the list of the things that I wanted to buy. Oh, the next item is keeping track of shooting locations. So. That's funny, because this mind map that I keep showing you is actually the list of locations for my nighttime downtown Vancouver locations video. But keeping track of locations, if I'm driving around um, and I see that the sun hits this corner particularly beautifully at 7 p.m., then I will write that down. <laughs> and even if I never go there, it's good to just have like a little itinerary in my mind of places that look nice at X time at in X season, right? And then, if I have somebody who hits me up and they're like, hey, like I really wanna do like an industrial vibe, I can be like, oh, well I scoped out these industrial locations here, let's meet there at four because the ideal lighting conditions are between four and six in the summer. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I have so many location feature videos is because I do a lot of location scoping and it, it's really easy for me to keep track of it because I've got it all here in my art journal. One of the final few items on my list is tracking inspiration and collecting the photos of others. I'll buy the big, editions of Vogue magazine or whatever and cut them up and just dissect 
the photos that I really like in them. And I'll show you a few examples of what that looks like. Sometimes they make collages of similar themes, similar colors of the Y2K revival. I'll make a collage of that. Just kind of visualizing trends and concepts and trying to find commonalities between what I like in photographs. So I got a bunch of photographs that I like, what is similar between them, um, what do I like about them, and so how can I then add those elements to my own photography. It's a great way to learn and I'm a very tactile person so being able to cut them out and like draw on them and scribble and like point to them and write labels about them is just, it's 100% how I learn. Another thing that I like about going through magazines and books and newspapers and things to find photos rather than just finding them online is that the photos you can find online are infinite. And so I personally tend to just pick out the absolute best and that almost limits the kinds of photos that I will pick. <laughs> so the ones on my Pinterest board are just the absolute best top quality photos that I've ever seen. Whereas the ones that I cut out of the magazine are the best that I found in the magazine. And honestly, I feel like it's more important to learn about what's been published in this like limited volume than to learn about like the very top tier photographs in the world each photographer will only get this shot once like I don't think that is as valuable to learn about as the nitty-gritty of what gets published. I'll also find a lot of older photos in secondhand stores. I like collecting like little postcards or just just photos that people have taken on their vacations and just analyzing the colors and the composition and just things that I like about them. I really enjoy taking in a lot of information about how other people do photography, even if they're not necessarily trying to be photographers, uh, which is the case with a lot of like the old um, prints that I found in secondhand stores and things. And speaking of prints, the next item on my list is keeping track of prints. So since I've been shooting with film a lot more, I have been getting a lot more prints. Like these guys here are, are eh, prints. <laughs> when you get them back, London Drugs gives you like an extra little print that's got thumbnail sized versions of all the prints on that roll. So here's an example. Here I've got the negatives. And this is an example of like what you can get back from London Drugs. I just really like having these all in one place. This is a failed uh, Instax mini shot, don't look at that. <laughs> but I just really like having them all in one place. It kind of brings the digital world of photography into the analog world of my journal a lot better, helps me keep track of them, and I can just see them all at a glance. So right now those photos are hidden in a folder on my hard drive, but in my notebook they are easily accessible and visible uh, on the page. I have also been keeping all of my negatives in the back of my journal. It's got like a little pocket in the back that I made. Um, so these are some of the photos that I bought from uh, secondhand stores. And uh, I made the pocket out of a little photo too. I really like that photo, it's just cool. So I put, yeah, all of the extra materials, some kind of photography from a black and white photo magazine, etc., in the back. Uh, I love having a pocket in the back. I'm worried that I'm gonna get too many of these really soon to actually keep in the back and you have to find a new place to put them. But that is a problem for another day. All right, so that is everything that I have on my list. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more content like this, like you're a little bit more interested in the crafty analog side of photography and planning photography, uh, let me know down in the comments because I will definitely make another video with tips like this. I could even do like a little walkthrough of my art journal and how it's related to photography or something like that. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, taking the time. <laughs> I know I rambled a little bit in this video, but it was pretty fun for me to film, so whatever. And uh, I will see you guys next week. I put out a new video every single Monday, so stay tuned. If you want to see them, uh, you can hit that subscribe button. You can also hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out. So <laughs> thank you guys again for watching. Stay sharp and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye guys.